Hey there, other ho there. It's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Degrassiism and another Degrassi poll video. And today we're going to take a look at the top 10 Claire storylines. Now, Claire was a major character in Degrassi Next Gen. She was sparingly seen in seasons five and six, interacting with Darcy, who we know is was her sister, and seven as well. And in season eight, when Degrassi retooled, of course, Claire was one of the main characters with Emma and her class graduating. So Claire was basically made to be this girl who actually ends up being um, the answer to Emma and all that. They, did, they needed a new Emma type, so they went with Claire as she interacted with Casey, Ali, and Connor and the gifted class, if you will. After that, Claire would have a romantic relationship with Casey but loses Casey to Jenna, and then she goes th th through with being with the brooding Eli, even though he has a hearse, and has on again, off again relationships with him several times. And then she has a lot of different things that have happened to her. Of course, we'll get to that when I talk about the top 10 storylines. And then, of course, we have the fact that um, Claire. They were trying to get Claire back to what they originally planned, like the hair apparent to Emma, but, you know, that's what happens. I apologize. Okay, now the sun's coming out. Yeah, the sun was clouded over for a while. Now the sun's out. So sorry. Using Reddit, I talked about some, some Claire moments, like 12 storylines, and it got cut down to 10. So here we go. So there's one poll. So the poll... First poll for Claire is 7 to 10. It's a ranking poll. Um, there was a tie for 9th, so I got to break it. So, okay, so number 10 on the list is her cancer storyline. I know that it didn't get received well in the preliminary polling, but yeah, she was number 10 on that poll. And Claire, Claire's cancer was huge. Because of the fact that, you know, she had something on her back. She had a bump on her back, but then she got it tested and it was myosarcoma or something. She has cancer. She tells Eli, who's off in New York, doing his thing. And basically, telecommunicates, saying that, I have cancer, yippee skippy. And, you know, she has to lose her hair and going through chemo and all that. And a lot of people were just shocked about Claire and her cancer. and like. They gave her cancer, like unbelievable. Of all people, it was Claire. But Claire manages to go through the cancer thing and is um, cancer-free, in a sense. And that leads to number nine on the list, is sexually accosted by Asher. So a while after getting cancer and beating it, she gets a news a magazine internship. Internship. Unfortunately, Asher, her boss, makes advances towards her, and I think he gropes her or something. Now, bear in mind, of course, this was the era where I didn't really watch Degrassi that much, seasons 8 to 14, so I don't know too much ahead of time. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, Asher accosted her. She wanted to go forward, but she was afraid that the magazine was basically going to axe her. But with a, a co-worker who also had been hit by Asher, she she and the co-worker take Asher to the task. Asher does get charged with accosting Claire, but doesn't get much in the way of punishment, if memory serves me right. And Claire ends up losing her job at the magazine, and she's very pissed off. But, you know, maybe it was because she went forward. But the magazine said they were making cuts, and Claire, it was an internship, but told Claire that, you know, you beat cancer. That's a win for you. And that should help you out. Number eight on the list with 11 votes. Remember, this is a 7 to 10 ranking poll. Is the pregnancy and miscarriage and smashing pills cameras. So in season 14, the final season Claire was in, uh, Claire unexpectedly decides to get in a relationship with Drew, who is chasing girls because, you know, he wants a suitable relationship after losing Bianca. So Claire and Drew manage to hook up. For some strange reason, Drew ends up being student council president and Claire being his assistant. 
So they have sexual tension and all that. And then Claire finds out she's pregnant. Claire thinks it is Eli's because she is also re in relationship with Eli. However, the doctor told her she was more far, more far along than she thought she was. And so practically, Claire knew that Drew didn't impregnate her. It was Eli. Unfortunately, Drew, well, Drew wants to care for Claire's baby and all that. And wants it to be named Adam after, you know, Drew's brother. Or transgender brother, I should say. The fact of the matter is that it got Drew in trouble with Becky's grandma because, you know, Drew got a text about the baby and all that. And Becky's grandma was not too happy that Drew was, that Becky was dating Drew who got another girl pregnant. So regardless of that, Claire ends up having miscarriage, which was the first ever in Degrassi history. And this goes back to Degrassi Junior High. So the fact of the matter is that Claire ends up you know, upset and all of that. She goes across the border with Eli, like to the States, and talks to Eli about miscarrying the baby and all that. And they have a heart to heart. And then the next episode, if memory serves me right, if it was the next episode, after that talk, um, Pill announces that Claire is a finalist for valedictorian and to make a speech. However, Pill also makes the statement of telling Claire that everyone's worried about her and the miscarriage. And Claire's like, I never told too many people about my miscarriage or only my friends. Well, they're worried about you. And then it's like, why would Pill know? Then she clues in that Pill's cameras in the hallway are to record audio and practically to make her try to find out what the problem is and fix the problem and become a good principal and to stay on as Degrassi's principal after Simpson was released through because of Degrassi Newt's. The fact of the matter is that Claire realizes it and then goes on the intercom, I mean, goes on the video system and outs Pill's policies. Pill doesn't bat an eye saying, you have a good job to be a politician, but being a factorian, that's not what you should be. And then basically, Claire decides to smash up all the cameras to spike Pill. She gets a massive two-week suspension. She loses her vice student council presidency. But Claire says it's worth it. And I think it was the writers saying that, you know, they wanted Claire to be like Emma with the causes and all that. And wanted Claire to go back to the way she was. She was supposed to be Emma's predecessor, I mean, successor. But yeah, that was one part of why Pill got dumped. Also, her contact with, contact with Drew was there. And it drew, pun not really intended, Audra's... Um, Ire and Audra used her power to help get Pill out. And Pill was a replacement anyhow. And the winner of the five, 7 to 10 poll and number 7 was being loved with Jake even though they were step-siblings. So what ended up happening is that Claire finds a boy named Jake after finally leaving Eli. But unfortunately, Claire and Jake are really interrupted by the fact that Claire's mom and Jake's dad are getting together. Claire does not like that because she instantly knows that if Claire's mom marries Jake's dad, then she can't really be with Jake because they're step siblings. And by tradition, it is illegal to have a relationship. So she tries to ruin the relationship, but Claire's mom marries Jake's dad and basically Claire is pushed to it. Claire is also pushed to a double standard of parenting that Jake gets away with a lot more than Claire does. But the fact of the matter is Claire still wanted to be with Jake because she needed somebody in a sense and wanted to forget Eli. Big mistake. All right, so that was 7 to 10. Now from 1 to 6, 54 total votes. There was a couple with good votes. So here we go. Someone commented, but it was probably a blocked comment. Okay, number 6 is her parents' divorce. Speaking of why Claire's mom would be marrying Jake's dad. In season... Nine or ten, I can't remember. I think it was ten. That well, seeds were planted in season nine that Claire's parents were not happy with each other, and Claire's dad was instantly seeing somebody behind Helen, aka Claire's mom's back. Claire, of course, is not too happy because of the fact that, you know, the Christian faith taught her to, you know, her parents can't divorce and they have to stay together and all that. Claire tries everything to get them to stay together, but they're just growing apart. Both of them don't blame Claire for the divorce, saying that it was inevitable. And that partially gets Claire to dump off her Christian faith and all that. She's not as Christian-y or religious as most people say Claire is. Although Becky would take that mantle later on. 
But the fact is that Claire's parents were divorcing. And the worst part was that even though there was a picture of Claire's dad with Claire and Darcy, Darcy was not mentioned or seen except for that photograph. Of course, we all know that Sinead Grimes left Degrassi to be in 90210, the reboot. And basically, Darcy wasn't even talked about. Not even, well, season 8, yes, but season 9 and 10, not really. Until the end, and Claire needed somebody to help her out. Okay, number five on the list with four votes was Eli crashing his car for her to see him in the hospital. So this was season nine. She ends up in love with Eli, even though he drives a hearse, and he has an ex-girlfriend named Julia who died. Claire's drawn to Eli, and all that. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. One of the storylines that didn't make the top ten was losing Casey to Jenna, and all that. But regardless of that. Eli crashing his car for her. So Claire is increasingly paranoid about Eli's behavior and all that. And wants Eli to, you know, stop stop doing being so reckless. So Eli ends up crashing his car so that Claire will visit him in the hospital. And no, Eli would kill his hearse for Claire. But Claire realizes it was a ruse and can't do it and go and breaks off with Eli and goes find tries to find someone else, including Fitz. So yeah, that was huge. Uh, number four is going to be the weed cult. Remember when I said Claire was having tr Claire was having problems? Like this was a weird one. The weird the weed cult. So basically, Claire goes to a bookstore and then finds a couple who want to talk to. Claire basically spills her guts saying that, you know, I live in a family that basically doesn't parent me right, you know, Claire, and my mom married my boyfriend's dad, so we can't go out anymore, and it seems like no, none of my parents want me and all that. Because of the fact that there was still the issue where Claire was going to live, with her dad and his new boat, or her mom, and of course, you know, Jake's dad. So Claire was at a crossroads, and the couple says, why don't you live with us? And all that. And Claire's like, okay. Of course, both of her parents don't know where Claire is, thinking that she's with the other. But the fact is that she goes to the weed thing. She learns about the weed stuff, and she just wanted to belong there. Fortunately, though, she got out of the weed cult and basically back with Claire's mom and Jake's dad. So, so basically, yeah, she was at a bad time in her life. Number, yeah, there was number four. Number three on the list was the sex toy in season eight. This was Claire's kind of first storyline, which was weird. I believe it was a background, a background story. Yeah, I think it was a subplot to a story. And the fact is that, you know, Claire in her goody-goody face wearing her Christian school outfit to Degrassi every time and being told by her mom all these things um, goes over to Snake's house to be with Connor and all that for some kind of um, study group thing. And then for some strange reason, Claire was enamored with Spike's vibrator. However. Then Claire finds something of her mom's and doesn't know what to do with it. And then she has it at school and she drops it in the bathroom, but someone picks it up. And I thought it was the chef looking at the video thing, but no, it was just Jane. But anyway, Claire's the vibrator goes off in class. It disrupts class. Holly's were not Holly's were, uh, sorry. The chef finds it and then grabs it. And for some strange reason, he nonchalantly keeps it. Claire's mom is called in to talk about the vibrator and she finally relents by telling Claire, do you have any questions about things? And it allows Claire to open up to her because she was just trying to protect Claire from the outside world, if you will. It was kind of funny and awkward at the same time. But that was not the best moment from season eight. Number two in the poll with 13 votes out of 54 was being called a bitch by Shep while defending Connor. So the story causing a commotion is when Connor acts all terrible and all that. 
you know, Connor did do some wrong in that episode. I will say that. And I will defend that. That Connor screwed up. But the fact of the matter is that Claire picks up on something wrong with Connor, even though that Connor gets in trouble and expelled by the chef. She goes over to Snake's house where Connor is staying. You know, Connor is Snake's godson. And Connor tells about how he's got Asperger's syndrome. And Claire's like, Asperger's? And then, you know, she looks into it and says that there's some people with autism and all that. And it was huge. Because this was the first autistic character or the character to be diagnosed autistic in Degrassi history. And it was weird because, you know, it was season eight and I didn't really watch Degrassi that much. And, you know, that would that was perfect to me because, you know, as everyone on the Degrassi Reddit should know, I'm autistic and all that. And, you know, it spoke to me. I even did a video about a study in Asperger's with Connor and myself in which I talk about the, the stunning um, similarities between me and Connor. And I will link to it in the description. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, she was being called, yeah. So Claire realizes it and then changes her clothes and then def tells Shep that Connor should come back to the school. Of course, the Shep is getting principal of the year, which was weird. It was like, Shep has barely been a principal that long in Degrassi. And also the fact is, you know, why? Just because you put a football team on for Degrassi, you get principal of the year. It just doesn't make sense. Now, I think the school board wanted to honor it for him and being at Lakehurst, but of course Lakehurst burned down in season seven. But also, I think that they were going to give it to Hatzalakos, but because she took that um, period of absenteeism or something, she took she took a break from being principal to deal with her mother in Regina, and Shep was principal. I think they wanted to give Hatzalakos the award, but you know, they didn't want to revote, so they give it to the chef. So the chef tells Claire and the gifted class to do a video on him being principal of the year, and then Claire gets mad at the chef for, you know, hurting Connor because he's different and all that. And he calls her a bitch. Now, of course, he calls her a bitch just to say, you're just a bitch. Like, you know, decent tone. And then at the principal of the year award, somehow in some way, Claire and the crew included Shep's rant by saying, you're a bitch, and upwards. A lot of people said Claire deserved it, but dude, this is season eight. This is her first season. So practically, you know, then the football team, everyone walks out on the Shep, and Shep is put into um, sensitivity training for two weeks, and Snake takes over. Claire gets interviewed by a school board head official who I thought was Pill, but it wasn't. And Claire doesn't bat an eye by basically telling her about the plan and all that. So this was basically Claire's introduction to being Emma's successor, like, you know, taking up causes and all that. It was a good cause to take up. And Claire, unlike Emma, a lot of the time, actually did well with that cause. But then they basically avoided the causes saying that, you know, they didn't want another Emma. And of course, the hate. But Claire gets Connor back in school. And number one by a long shot was, did you flip a switch and erase me from your memory? I can't remember what that was. I keep thinking it's season 11 for the life of me. But the fact of the matter is that, yeah, season 11 is that moment. And Claire is upset because Eli seemed to forget all about her. And it's like, Claire's trying to forget about Eli. And then she says that iconic line, did you flip a switch? Did the last six months mean nothing to you? It's like, Claire was just huge. And of course, Katie calls her drama and all that. And to me, I think Claire was being drama. Was being a drama queen. For some strange reason. But yeah, Claire botched everything up. But yeah, that's an iconic moment. Claire will always be remembered by that quote, did you flip a switch and erase me from your memory? Claire should be remembered for being the one that got a lot of storylines. They piloted on Ashlyn Paul and she did fantastic dealing with it. And they wanted to maybe make Claire the next double, but technically they didn't because Claire was well liked and all that. And her causes were very few and far between. 
a bear to Emma. So that's just how I feel, and that's just how you feel about Claire, hopefully. Anyway, I'm Jet Diamond. I do.